What's the best path to love? Maybe it looks like soft, dancing candlelight. Or is it piercing and sharp right through the darkest of nights? Maybe it looks like thoughtful cards bought from a store. Or is it enduring words of ancient and divine truth? Maybe it's like fancy chocolates and special dinners. Or is it the bread of life that feeds a hunger we didn't know we had? One thing I've learned is that romance can get you through the day, but only love can get you through your life. Jesus offers this kind of love. It doesn't fade when beauty does. It stretches all the boundaries. It challenges every wall. It digs up every root of sin that keeps us from all his goodness. His love sees past our bouquet of weeds to the dirty little face reaching for a hug and the desperate eyes hoping for a hand of help. His love looks for the need behind the neighbor who never waves and the young man always misunderstood. His love reaches for the family who can't catch a break, the broken body that can't get back to life as normal. His love is wrapped in compassion that doesn't run out of steam. And the more we accept it in our lives, the more we are able to give it back to all those around us. So maybe I'll take romance for a day. Okay, maybe a few days. But I want his love for a lifetime. Amen. Yo, that was so powerful when I saw it. Amen. I want his love for a lifetime. Because his love is eternal. Isn't that powerful? Amen. His love is eternal. And you know what? Um, we came to the 12th day of the fast and uh, 21 days and today is the 12th. Ooh, this fast was hectic. Yes. <laughs> And uh, everyone did different fasts. No matter what fast you did, it was difficult. Yes. Maybe to fast from social media. Oh, your fingers just go on that phone, you know? <laughs> you want to fast from those things and rather get the word inside of you because the Bible says, what is eternal life is to know God and Jesus Christ who may I say. And many people don't know who their God is. And that's why it's important for us when we fast, we will continue this fast every Tuesday. The church fasts together and we pray. Amen? Amen. Amen. So you can do a fast from 12 the night to 12 or 12 to 6 o'clock the night, 8 o'clock. It depends on you, the Tuesday fast. But I'm telling you this fast whew, was just and a lot of things has been happening in our Jesus. lives yes, you know yes. we've been busy with lots of cases young people what they're going through and counseling and they've had visitors from the Namibia so it just went on and on and on but you know when you surrender to Christ you know you say Lord have your way my life is in your hands I lay down my life to do your will amen, amen. and that is what fasting is all about when you die to yourself and you allow God to work through you, you humble yourself to His will. And it's not easy just to do it. You know, that's why you must die to the flesh. God don't communicate to your flesh. The Holy Spirit, He communicates to your spirit. That's why we worship. When we worship, we die to the flesh. We forget about the pot on the stove. We forget about Easter. <laughs> The straightening iron on. Uh, we forget about that other things that worry us. Am I right? Yes. And then we feel the Spirit of God just connecting with us. Amen. And that is actually dying when we worship. You die to your mind and to yourself. But yes, it was a powerful fast. I'm going to have some testimonies what God has done in this fast. We had a prayer meeting on Tuesday night. It was Wednesday night. It was very powerful. You know, I think it was Wednesday night, I can't remember. My daughter phoned me 3 o'clock the night. Mom, my bed is shaking. I said, why is your bed shaking, my child? She said, there's an earthquake. She's in Cyprus and that's just, so over the sea there, we find Turkey and Syria. Look, when the earthquake hit three, between 3.30 and 4.30, 
3 and 4 o'clock. I said, that is how the Son of Man is going to come. And deep, when we are in a deep sleep, then he comes. I said, my daughter, are you ready? Because, I mean, look, when that earthquake happened. And you know what? A friend phoned her from Lebanon and told her, put on your clothes. Go into the street. I said, no, you put on your clothes, but you stay indoors. Because nothing is going to touch wherever you are now. Amen. Amen. And you know what? I think she's in the southern part. The northern part, the building fell in. Just on the island. She's on the island. And then in, I think in Turkey, did you see the news? Oh, yes. I think 21,000 people died with just a minute of an earthquake because it was 7.8. 21,000 people died in an instant. They didn't even, they, they are in their sleep, they are gone. A father was standing with the daughter's hand and the daughter squashed under rocks. And he's holding on to his daughter. This is what's happening in the earth, people. We're living in the, the signs of the times. And if we're not going to awake now and start to lay down our lives and not just live for ourselves, we self, our world in this life is just for a season. We need to wake up. Amen? And uh, we see in our country as well things happening. The sona was like a circus. The leaders, we need to pray for our government. We need to pray for our government for righteous people. Amen? So that is the things we need to pray about. And then our focus is to reach a soul. To reach a soul for this year. I, I'm not saying every day. Just for this year, reach one soul. That's not a big thing to ask. Am I right? Amen. Just one soul for the year. This is what I'm asking. One soul for the year. And so we had a lot of souls, we led to the Lord in this time, we had counseling and demonic things that we were dealing with. But God, you know, He gives us the wisdom and the power to deal with things. The Lord is saying in this time, do not compromise your faith. Amen. Do not compromise, there's a lot of deception happening. And if you don't know the word, you can compromise. Or, if you like mammon, you can compromise your faith for money. Be careful. Amen? What is the truth is the truth. We must stand firm on what is the truth. Because it's only the truth that sets us free and keeps us free. And what is the truth? The love of God. The word of God. And I asked you to read Acts 7. Acts 7 is about a man that was willing to lay down his life for the truth because he knew God's love. But before we get there, I would like to call up Marisha. She's got a testimony of the power of God in her life that she didn't know and she saw God's power in action. I want to call up Damien, our brother Damien as well. Um, we had a powerful prayer meeting and all these things started happening in the prayer meeting. Souls were saved. Healings were taking place, confessions was, were, were made of being set free in the fast. Amen? Amen. So we're going to hand over to Marisha. Hi, um, I'm Marisha. Um, I'm going to speak of Rikans, um because I will explain or Ik zal mij zelf beter verdedigen in Afrikaans, want ik is eigenlijk van een platte land. En ze hebben weer wat kei die doen, maar dat daar is door. Al rijf ik ik is van daar. Ze zegt dat ze is van een plek dat ze gewoon spreken Afrikaans, dat ze gewoon gewoon expres kan uitspreken. Ja. Ik kan toch niet Engels, maar mijn kinderen zijn Engels, maar ik zou willen dat ze dit in Afrikaans doen. Amen. Amen. Is het oké? Zo, laatst week. Laatst week. Last week in Woensdag. In Woensdag. Ja. Maar ik heb het wel geklaagd in een paar jaar. Maar ik heb het wel geklaagd. Dat is een zo van haar. Maar het is fijn. Dan moet ik jouw periods krijgen. Dat is ik aan mij dat. No, mom, it's not that. I can't take this pain. It's not like every month. Dat is een weird pain. En ik zeg van, oké, die Woensdag, ik ga veel dokter doen. Ik was ook maar zeer bij een baan voor dokter. Ik ga je in dan gaan we leren. Nou, zet ik aan die dokter zeggen, maar zet ik aan mijn handen. Ik ben bekend. Nou, 
Hat er die Doktor das in Frase? Um, no, she made my sister to sound. Um, she saw a, a cyst something. Oh, she felt a cyst. The doctor felt a cyst. And, um, what did I say? Don't say like that. I know, to my eyes here. And I don't see anything. But I was sitting like this. In the name of Jesus. Yes, yes. That's not seen. That is not seen. In the name of Jesus. It's in my class, I say. My ex is not seen. Sure. Ik zie niks. En ik kom hier en ik sta hier. En ik sta hier onder en allemaal praat en allemaal bad. En ik kan hem niet houden. Ik kan hem niet houden. Ik kan hem niet houden. Wat is je? Wat is je daughter? Kom. En ik ga in de kaalvoetjes en ik doe liever kaalvoetjes. En pas de wat nog. Want ik zeg pas de wat in mijn eerst praat. En ik zie. such a blessing and it's amazing how the Lord could just turn me to that girl. Come and stand here, Michael. Amen. Come and stand here. And now the Lord, which is how could she, the moment when you receive the Lord, everything that was in you was out. Jesus. Could you feel the change in you? Yes, it felt like a mountain of my shoulders. Amen. How did you feel afterwards? Great, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Praise like faithfulness. Amen. What was so powerful for me last week? This young man. How old are you now? 13. 13 years old. I still said to everybody he's 14. But the Lord knew. The Lord knows everything. You know, Diane is a social worker. I do a lot of colleges and things with her in the day. And we saw revival. You know. But this young man, when he came, 
prayed for him. He went out. He made a sinner's prayer with everyone. And he came back and said, Pastor, my sister is 19 years old. And she's also doing drugs. Is it right? Yes, Pastor. Are you set free now? Yes, Pastor. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Amen. Are you clean now? Amen. Are you clean, my young man? Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Now, I want the enemy to tell you that the enemy is not happy with it. I want you to listen to, to my sister. What happened? What happened to them? Morning, church. Um, this Keenan, his mom passed on when he was one year old. Um, and that week, his mom was phoning me, I want to connect with Pastor Louis, I want to connect with Pastor Louis. And that was still at the house. Um, and yes, I brought her to church the Thursday, Pastor prayed for her, and she passed on the Sunday. Um, and his mom's desire was to be in the house of the Lord. Oh, wow. And you know, this like Friday, it took me back um, to what happened that week. Because this week we also lost somebody through, through, through that in the family. It was quite a difficult week for me. But what happened Friday, I was sitting with my in-laws and here this lady came and said, Kenan was locked up. I said, locked up? And I jumped in my car and then went to Soprite. Um, called the manager and <laughs> yes, he had his friends and the friends. And then the manager told me that they saw everything on the camera. And on the camera, they saw that the other boy put the chocolates into, into his friend's bag. Now, because he's just a child, this boy asked him to keep the bag because it is so heavy. And then the boy went to fit the butter and the chocolates. And then the boy said, Keenan, go put the butter back. And when he was gone, the, boys, the boy put the chocolate in the bag and then sent him to security. And that is where he was caught. Um, and because he's 13, the law uh, don't allow. You know, that's the law. But while I was, you know, I was so cross, I gave him a hiding. <laughs> and and while, while I was still busy, the, the, other, the other guys came and I, and I thought, who are you? And it was big guys. And I said, and I chased them away. And the culprit came in. And you know, God revealed to me that it is him. Not knowing. Afterwards, he told me what happened. Um, and just this morning, you know, I've been praying for him. And the family, we're, on our we, we're actually on our nerves because what happened? His sister was going to high school when she fell into drugs. And what, is, what happened to his sister is not happening to him. Mm. And I said, this curse needs to be broken. Amen. It needs to be broken. I won't stand for yes. the devil. I'm going to claim my soul. Yes, right? yes, yes. And it says, on our, on our way, because he hasn't got the uh, mom, he hasn't got the act of that, on our way to church. So there was a big guy that I don't, and I, and I turned his away. So this guy was telling him, you know, I was about to tell them, I'm your father, I want to get to God. But what? Church, I want to tell you, you know, when pastor called all our children out that Sunday, you know, this is what's happening at the schools. It's only a month in high school, and we've already been introduced to drugs. Only a month, so we need to appreciate God for Pastor Louis for the reason what he sees ahead of us. Um, and you know, it made me as a church member more appreciative to our leader, to my father. Amen. And I want to thank, take this opportunity to thank him for covering us and covering our family. And I know the devil is not going to have his soul. Amen. Amen. So, I need to tell you this. I took them to McDonald's because, you know, um, they didn't eat. I was chatting to him. And he said, my grandma went to Hrotesphere, heart failure. And then I said to him, I need to tell you this testimony. Some time ago, in 2010, um, one of my neighbors, and he told me that he's a new apostolic. So I said to him, no, this is the God, is the God, is the mighty God. We're not the God church bound. Yes. We're the God of the universe. Yes. And I said, I want to share this testimony with you. 
So there was also one of my neighbors who belonged to the New Apostolic Church. And he was a busy dying. And his son of 10 years old came the Sunday because he wanted to come with me to church because he witnessed one of our civic center meetings where the people, you know, was set free walking out of wheelchairs. And I said to him, Chesla, no, we have not got the son, but God sees your faith. I will take you Tuesday night to our service. That time is was still in the house. Yeah. And I said, bring a t-shirt of your dad. And he, he, he did that. And pastor prayed on the t-shirt. And when that boy took the t-shirt home, that man, that Sunday he was greeting all his family. And that man stood up when he put that t-shirt on. And he said, God, I just want to see the sun come up. Oh, and he was healed immediately Jesus. from the dead bed. He was healed. And I say that testimony with him because I see he's so concerned for his grandma Amen. that was taken to hospital. Amen. So the same God that healed Amen. that man can heal his grandma. Jesus. So I want to thank Pastor Louis. I want Pastor Louis to cover him because um, what also came to me that the devil and his angels, they like vultures in the schools. Yes. Hey? Yes. And we, I, I don't think we have an idea what's happening. I don't think we have an idea. In a time of a month, you know, a young boy like 13 years old. So, church, we need to pray for our kids. We need to cover them. The church needs, we need to take control. We need to take territory in our church. Amen. In our schools. Yes. And so I want to thank you, Pastor Louis and Pastor Patty, for everything. Amen. 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 Can we just guide them and just come? Stand there, stand there, stand there. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Th
it was one morning after the service and you know, I spoke to her and I asked her I have a desire to be baptized but I have a strong hold that is keeping me I don't know if I can be baptized so I asked her if it is possible uh, I told her that I was still smoking but I never told her that time what I was smoking and then she told me that um, <coughs> You can be baptized, but the smoking part, I cannot help you with it. Only Jesus can help you with that part. And if you confess with your mouth and your tongue and cry out to the Lord, then you will be delivered. And I put my name on for baptism. And I was baptized. And after the baptism, I was still smoking. But not as I was smoking, because I put effort in to reduce my smoking. What were you smoking? I was smoking um, Taha. As I say, I was still smoking Taha, yes. And uh, I started reducing my smoking by smoking less. And every time I smoked after the baptism, I was convicted by the Holy Spirit. In the sense of why. This is not of the Spirit. You cannot smoke. You need to stop this what you're doing. And Time went on and the fast drew near and as the fast drew near I told my wife that was the sign of the man that the fast started and I told her that this fast is for me Amen. and it's for no one else. It can be for whoever but this is for me because I am desperate and pastors still say that sign you need to be desperate Amen. Um, and I became desperate and I cried out to the Lord every night to help me because I cannot do this on my own. Amen. And I cried out and and I felt his, his presence so close to me in the sense that I knew that I will become more than an overcomer Amen. in Christ Jesus. And um, I started with the fast, I did the Daniel fast and I completed it 21 days today. Due to the fast today, I'm three weeks without smoking. I give all the praise and honor to, the, to my Lord Jesus Christ. And as the word says, when, the, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you will receive power. What they have done for me, He can do for you. So whatever stronghold you have, give it to the, give it to the Lord. Lay it at His feet. And he, and he shall show you wonders and miracles. For when I was smoking, I never stopped for one day in my life. Uh, I was I was in, caught up in gangsterism. I was in a lot of stuff. I was robbed from my life from young already. I had to, I had to be dead so many times. I cannot tell you. But now I can see that the end of the Lord has moved in my life since day one. Yes. So I give all the praise to the Lord and I thank the Lord for Pastor Patty and for Pastor Louis that came into my life. And from day one, I always used to just bring my wife and my in still Lord to church. But I always knew when I'm going to step into the church, my life is going to change. Okay. So Fetch them when I'm a bit early and I'm standing outside, even if I wait or here, yeah, then I can hear a pastor preaching from the inside to the outside. I'm sitting there, but I'm getting, I'm feeling, getting goosebumps sitting in the car. I always told my wife, when I'm going to step in here, things are going to change for me. The word for today is you died now spiritually like the flesh yes. you died now this is the word for today you need to die to the flesh yes. in order to be that new creation yes. yes and many people just say okay I'm a new creation in Christ but did they die to the old mm -hmm. you will just experience the joy and the power of the Holy Ghost and the abundant life and the overflow when you die to the self. Every week pastors say, die to yourself, die to yourself. It goes in here and go out there. 
He actually did it. Amen. And now he's going to, you know, carry that fruit. And whoo, I see you. He loves the word. I can see it already. The word just flows out of him. Amen. I'm excited. I think what was uh, amazing for me when he came and I came to him, and as I look at him, the Holy Spirit just ministered to my spirit. Because, you know, coming to church Sunday morning, I'm ready for God to speak through me. I'm ready for signs and wonders. I'm ready to be used by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. I'm ready, holy and separate. Amen. And as I look, I said to him, the grace of God over you, I said to him, you could have been killed many times. And I saw the tears in this guy. Immediately when it was released from my spirit, from the Holy Spirit Himself. Jesus. Oh, who spoke through me to Him. Covered Him for Him for such time to be a witness. Because He could have been killed so many yes, times. Yes. And He just said, Yes, so tears. And that's there we received the life. The battle with the smoking was nothing. God was already at work doing the work. Amen. He makes all things beautiful in his time. God meets you on the level of your faith and God will give the increase. That is the increase that he gave the Lord that little and the little become much. When you place it in the master's hand is too real. And that's why with him as the increase came with the fast, he believed, he could see conviction came to me because that is this thing is blocking my fever and my blessings and my walk with God and my vision. And that's why I had to let go of it. Stand there, my brother. Open your hands. Yes, that's right. He's already the tears. But I want you to know, he's watching over you. He's got great plans for you. He's watching over you. Father, just for him. He's the vessel, Father. Let him be the vessel, Holy Spirit. The vessel for your Holy Spirit. The vessel for the move of the Spirit of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm so overwhelmed. Really overwhelmed of what the Lord can do. Thank you for your service. How the Lord can transform. And uh, yeah, Wednesday night was powerful. You know, when one soul gets saved, the angels are rejoicing. And so many souls uh, got saved on, on Wednesday night. And when I see this, this young man here, and I thank God that the Son of Man, the Son of God was manifested to destroy the works of the enemy. Because the enemy wanted to destroy him. But thank God for prayer over his life. And that he came to say, Lord, I'm going to die to the flesh. I'm going to die to this addiction. I'm going to die to my mindset. I'm going to lay my life down because Jesus laid his life down for me. He loved me so. So I will lay down my life for him. When are we going to get to that part? To lay down your life for his life. Because he laid down his life. He loved us so much. It's all about love. He's got a perfect plan for Damien. He's got a perfect plan for you and me. But we must lay down our lives and our will for God's will. Sometimes we want to do things in our own strength. But we see when the Holy Spirit <coughs> came upon the disciples in the Old Testament, I'm uh, sorry, in the, the New Testament, in the book of Acts. They received power when the Holy Spirit came upon them. When you receive the power, you become bold. You become bold to say no to what is not of God. Amen? The Holy Spirit, when He comes upon you, you receive the Comforter. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you receive an Advocate. Am I right? When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, He makes you bold because it's the Holy Spirit is God Himself coming to live inside of you. But God cannot manifest Himself through you if you still block Him through your flesh. Am I right? So that's why we fasted. So that the flesh can give way. Because God's plan for you is far bigger than your plan. But you are limiting God through your flesh. You are limiting God through your flesh. 
God's got a big plan. And you know when you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, you become fearless. What is fearless? I do not fear what people think about me. I do not fear uh, for tomorrow because I know the Holy Spirit is in me. He will provide for me. He will protect me. He will preserve me. Amen? Amen. So when you allow the Holy Spirit to live inside of you like the, the book of Acts, I want you to start reading the book of Acts. We are in Acts 7 at the moment. You will see when the Holy Spirit came upon the 120, it turned into 3,000 that got saved. Am I right? And then they needed help. And then they prayed and they said, Lord, give us leaders to help us with this 3,000 people. And they prayed and they chose seven. And of the seven men they chose that was full of the Holy Ghost was Stephen. And Stephen was a young man. And Stephen, because of the love he experienced in God, he received the truth inside of him through the power of the Holy Spirit. And he would not stand back anymore to close his mouth concerning the truth of the word. And you know what? 3,000 got saved in Acts 2 when Peter preached. When Stephen preached, he preached the truth. He said, you killed Jesus. You killed the Messiah. And you are now even stubborn to deceive the Holy Spirit. And he was brought before the council. And you know what? The Jewish council, and he knew when he's going to speak, his life is in their hands. They can... Uh, you know, give him the death sentence. And you know what Stephen did? He just spoke what the Lord wanted him to say. And he says in Acts 7, you can go read at home as well. I want to see more Bibles in the house. Amen. Israel resists the Holy Spirit. Uh, this is Acts 7 verse 51. You stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. This is what he preached to the council. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who foretold the coming of the just one, of the one you now have become the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the direction of the angels and have not kept it. Now Stephen the martyr. Do you know what's a martyr? It's not somebody that uh, give his life, but lay down his life. This was Stephen. So Stephen appeared in front of this council. He spoke the truth. He says they, uh, they are hard of hearing. They are stiff-necked. They are not listening to the word of the Holy Spirit. They don't want to receive the Holy Spirit. And they said in verse 54, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. Many people, if they hear the word, they resist the Holy Spirit. They do not humble themselves to the Holy Spirit. They rather become ardent of heart. The Bible says that the word of God is like a two-edged sword. It cut between marrow and bone, and it discerns the thoughts. So they didn't want to hear the word of God. They cut. They were cut to the heart, and they gnashed their teeth. With, uh, they gnashed at him with their teeth. They were saying, Ugh! they were getting angry. They were putting their fingers into their ears. They don't want to hear. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God. Can I get that picture? And he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God. So, they are gnashing at him. He knew they are going to, you know, Jesus knew already what's going to happen. And he looked up. He looked up, not that one. He looked up to the sky. Don't you have the one? I've got another one there. Yeah. He looked up steadfastly to the sky. What did he see in the sky? And he saw steadfastly looking to heaven and he saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand side of God. Remember, Jesus is seated at the right hand side. Am I right? Mm -hmm. The right hand is a powerful hand. But Jesus is standing. He's watching. Because this is the first martyr of the church that's going to lay down his life. He's the first person 
in the history, this church just started now in Acts, uh, Acts 1, we see this church just started. He's going to lay down his life. And you know what? The council or the Jews thought they're going to stop the Christian church. But they didn't know with him dying, that is fuel that they poured onto the whole movement of the Christians. And they became unstoppable. Amen? So if we have a, you have a family tree, I have a family tree, this is the Christian family tree. Stephen, do you know Stephen? He's like, almost like the father that laid out his life after Jesus for the church of Jesus Christ. Isn't that awesome? He laid out his life and he was standing and Jesus was looking today. Jesus is standing from heaven, he's looking at us and he's saying, my grace is sufficient for you. I love you. I validate you. I love you with an eternal love. This is what Stephen felt when he stood up to the truth. He knew that, that God loved him and he knew if he's going to be stoned now, he knew where he's going to open his eyes. And he said, Behold, I saw the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand side of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice. They stopped their ears. They closed their ears. And they ran at him with one accord. This is the devil himself. And they cast him out of the city and they stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man called Saul. And they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God and saying, Lord, Receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. They don't say he died. They say he fell asleep. In Christ we fall asleep because we're going to awake again. Amen? Amen? On resurrection day. But what is so powerful is, he said, Lord, Where's the picture? Do not charge them with the sin. Why could he say that? Because he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Maybe somebody did something against you and you've got hatred in your heart or unforgiveness. What did he say? He, they were stoning him. He said, Lord, do not charge the sin towards them. Jesus said on the cross, Father, forgive them when they stoned him, when they spat at him, when they crucified him and he was not guilty, had no sin. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. You can just say those words if the Holy Spirit is in you, the love of God. Amen? When we have the love of God inside of us, we can forgive. We can forgive. Am I right? So we must learn of Stephen's life. I want you to go home and I want you to read the story. That he laid down his life. Oh, we're ready to lay down our life for Christ's sake. I don't say die physically. Die to the flesh and in the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, God's got big things for us. But if we're not willing to die to the flesh, we will not experience the power and the freedom and the limitless love what he has for us. It says in John 12 verse 24, I'll be done now. Most surely I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. If you are alone again, I say today, if you feel alone, that means you never die to yourself. You never die to your flesh. You never let the Holy Spirit take full control of you. Because if you know Jesus in you, you know that He loves you. He validates you. And you don't care what others say about you because you know He loves you. Amen? Amen. So, so when, and you know what is so significant is when you die to yourself. That is where you find your spiritual family. Isn't that awesome? When I died to myself, I found Sister Delsha. I found Brother Engel. I found Benita. I found Brother Marcello, Sister Nikki. We wouldn't have been connected if we're not in the spirit. Amen? Amen. So when you die to yourself, you're going to find yourself in Christ.
grass and you won't feel alone anymore because Holy Spirit is in you and then it produces much grain. From one apple, one apple seed, you can create an orchard. Do you know that? Your life can touch so many right across the world. It starts by you. You die to yourself. You're going to touch your family. You're going to touch your uh, you know, extended family. You're going to touch your school. You're going to touch your community. You're going to touch everywhere. Matthew told me they're going to start a Christian union at school. Isn't that awesome? Amen. People know that. He who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will, all, will be also. If anyone serves me, him, my father will honor. Uh, Nikki, the last one. No. If anyone serves me, says the Lord in John 12, let him follow me. Where I am, is it that one? No, not that one. Sorry, go back. Go back to John 8. Go back to John 8. He called the multitude to himself with his disciples and said to them, Whosoever wants to come after me, after me, let him deny himself. Do you know what is deny yourself? Die to your flesh. If you want to do it that way, if you follow that, that friends that is not good for you, that means you are not denying yourself. Follow those that's going to you know, encourage you in your work and the faith in, in Christ Jesus. Deny yourself. You want to be with that friends? They make you feel good. But if they're still busy with the wrong thing, smoking, gossiping and whatever they're doing, cut them off. Amen? Deny yourself. If you are addicted, deny yourself from that addiction. Deny yourself from bad thoughts. Deny yourself from hating yourself. And take up his cross and follow after me. Many people don't like to take up the cross. But Jesus says that we are crucified. You know, it's Paul that says, I'm crucified with Christ. When are you going to allow your flesh to be crucified with Christ? I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. And this life now, which I live now in the flesh, how do I live it? I live it by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That is Valentine's Day. <laughs> Where does it come in now? Why do you say that? That is Valentine's Day. God of love. He loved you so much. So crucify yourself. I don't say a real crucifixion. Please now, don't misunderstand me. <laughs> crucify your flesh. Die to that negative thoughts. Die to that self-hatred and forgiveness. Die to that idolatry. Usually if, if, if there's an idol in your life that causes you to stumble, <clears throat> die to that. Amen? And then you walk by faith and not by sight. And you will experience His love no matter where you find yourself. You will experience His love and His boldness and His power. Amen? Amen. And then you will become more than an overcomer through Christ who loves you. I will continue next week. Amen. But thank you so much. I love you all. Pastor and I, we love you all. Remain in prayer, remain fasting every Tuesday. Amen? Amen. And pray for our government, pray for our schools. Sister Diane says, a prayer request, pray for our schools, pray for our children. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Can you have the band to the front? We're going to close now. Amen. The lesson stop. Can I have a man? Amen. And speaking of dying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what was so powerful for me last week. It really touched me and restored my spirit within. God
is faithful. Amen. Amen. Say God is faithful. Amen. And the guy is here from Namibia that was here. And I saw the young man as I led him to the Lord this Saturday night. He believed in so many gods. And I said, I gave him a year. Uh, I said, oh, you finished? Let me tell you about my God. I want you to know that my God made all the other gods. There was no one before him, and there will be no one after him. I said, why? And then I shared with him things that he didn't even know, but he went into things. And I said to him, and the Holy Spirit just said to me, he doesn't know the power of God. I said to him, just get up, just get up. Just stand there in the kitchen. He didn't take him to the lounge or society. He took him in the kitchen. He get up. And I look at him. I said, you're going to experience the power of God. The power of God took him out. You know, when he got up, he wanted to know, what is this? He was so desperate. I said, no, you must come to church Sunday. He came here. He was sitting, closing his eyes. So I thought to myself, what's happening here? That man had an encounter. He said he couldn't see anymore. He was so focused that he was receiving such a lot that blindness distracted him. Sure. And he kept it like that. And he heard us say, We say yes, 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 Lord, yes. He said, he said, then he saw the light from behind his eyes coming to the front. Sure. And when he saw, he really wanted to bring up and he Amen. He went out so fast. When he got to the toilet, oh, there wasn't even time to bring it up. He just collapsed there on his back. On his back on the toilet, crying like a child. Then pray. And Tyler found him laying there. Qualified lawyer. I said to my son, God will meet you. God will meet to every young people, person here. Every young people, person that's on drugs, any young people that need to grow in the Lord, God will meet you on the level of your faith. Just give the Holy Spirit something to work with. I want to tell you. I want to tell you. I want, we will hardly see you. Can I have an amen? Let me go to a higher point. I tell you, they will hardly see you because why you will be sold out. God is just looking for a vessel. A willing vessel which he can speak through. It's all. Because the word is the word. You know, all week he's been telling me, even Wednesday, obedience. I said, Lord, why is only obedience? Are oh, you telling me I'm not obedience? You're telling me I'm not obedient? No one is really obedient. Sometimes your mind will run away with you and you need to pull it in with the word of God. Amen. You want the mind of Christ. You want the characteristics of the Holy Spirit. Yes. No, Lord, I'm spiritual, spiritual minded. Lord, I'm obedient. And it's just your wall, your Ferrari Hey! Hey! <laughs> well, your heart is easy, your choice. And the Lord showed me obedience, very powerful. I want you to know this morning. Young guys, it just came to the Lord too. You who dwell in the, in the secret place of the Most High yes. shall abide under the saddle yes. of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the Lord took me over. That's 91. Then, you know, Verse 1 and 2. And then 91 verse 11 said, the young boys that just came to the Lord, I want you to listen to this. This is for you who just came to the Lord. For he shall give his angels. Angels. He shall give his angels. I want you to know he shall give his angels. You're not alone. No matter what school you go in, the bullies and things, you will give his angels charge. Tell the Lord, Father, according to your word, said, you will give your angels charge over me. Let's do this. For he shall give his angels charge. Charge over you. Charge over you. Listen to this. As I said, God meets you on the level of your faith. To keep you. To keep you. In all your ways. Done. 
It's the world. You doubt it, you go without it. But you receive it, your life will never be the same again. There's angels that's watching over you right now. There was an angel watching over my brother who testified, who was involved with gang, he was involved with gangsters and stuff. God knew about this day that he's going to testify. Even when they wanted to kill him, he could see. That guy, you know, they came to him like that. And he escaped. He escaped. Not once or twice. He escaped. Because God, somebody was praying for him. His mom was praying for him. His mom was sowing seeds for him. His mother, his father was on his knees praying. That mom was on her knees. Give his angel charge over you. The angels was over him. Knowing about this day that he will testify to us. Prepare me for the Bible school. You can become a mighty warrior for the Lord. When Alistair was busy with the scholar that wanted to destroy him, the COVID, he said, I'm not going to hospital. I am going to die in the room called the children. That's why his children is so open to the spirit today. Even if they worship, you just see the tears flowing. And everybody's seen it. Everybody's talking about it. Look what it costs for the Holy Spirit to do them to get the youngsters close to me. God knows what it takes to change your heart. Yeah. Many times don't wait for that. Yeah. Faith is now. Your money can be now. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not see it? Amen. Forget the old. Forget the old. Many of us are moving in the old in the past. Forget the former. Forget the former things. Behold. Have you not yet? God wants you to see it. This is the Hallelujah. time and the hour. Hallelujah. Many times we get robbed. We get robbed of the truth. What is the truth? It will make you free. Amen. It's the truth. I said, Lord, why are you showing me that? Obedience. And the Lord took me, he was obedient to the end. Amen. Jesus was obedient to the end. He could have called 10,000 angels, but he was obedient to the end. He died for me and you to give us eternal life. Life began when Jesus came in, even this young boy that could stand in for his sister. 13 years old, sister's 19 years old. What does he know about staying in a box when he's on drugs and stuff? But you know what? He who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Lord. You see, in this presence here, I can say, Amen, let's go home, it's home. But while you're still here, the Holy Spirit knows who need a word? Amen. Who need to be free? Amen. The Holy Spirit knows whose debt must he write off. He will work in a heart. I see the day, my sister. Hey, man. He knows who need financial blessings. He said, Send me and you will find me. Knock and I will open. He is the friend that stick closer than a brother. Closer than a brother. Let your request be known. Because his angels is watching over here. His angels is watching over you. All you need to do is just take that step of faith. Faith is now. Your miracle is now. It's in the presence of the Lord. Because one word can set you free. 
You need a breakthrough in your life. Your mind is running away with you. When God come in or not, when he come in, I'll stop that. His word says, I will make a way where the sin is to be no way. A young man, come here. What's his name? Come here. Yeah, yeah, come here.
Stand up to say, Lord, turn my unbelief to believe. And I'm going to close the service, but I want to tell you if you've got unbelief, the time is running out. I'm going to lay my hands on you. I want you to come to the front quick to turn your unbelief to believe. Don't delay that. That is what drove you.
magistrates. This is very important. As you know, God took away the disease that he had. Lupus. There's no cure for it. He's the only man to see If God, listen to me, if God can use the lupus, this is a young man. They said he's young. He said he's got cancer in his back. The same God that removed that is going to remove the cancer now.
Jesus all the time. That's under the sound of my voice this afternoon. I pray in the name of Jesus. I pray for a supernatural increase from the throne of the head to the soles of the feet right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. I command the spirit of the Lord right wherever they are right now to touch them. To touch them from the throne of the head to the soles of the feet in the name of Jesus. I pray for breakthrough right now, right now.